question is consider an eight field rectangular waveguide operating in the dominant te10 mode at a frequency f for this waveguide lambda g is the guide wavelength lambda c10 is the cutoff wavelength corresponding to the dominant mode if f is so chosen that only dominant te10 mode pro propagates which one of the following is true here we know that lambda that is guide wavelength equals to free space wavelength that is lambda naught 1 minus lambda naught by lambda c10 whole square under root here lambda naught equals to c by f where c is the velocity of light that is speed of the light or velocity of the light so if we solve this expression for this one that is c by f yeah. c is uh, 1 by under root mu naught epsilon naught here Here we know that this we can c by f we can keep it as it is lambda naught. If we solve equation one, that is this one, we will get one by f equals to mu naught epsilon naught lambda c ten lambda g divided by lambda c 10 square lambda g square which is option a is correct question is at a frequency of 1 gigahertz the equivalent inductance between the terminals of a lambda by 8 short circuited lossless 50 ohm line is means suppose this is the line whose length is lambda by 8 it is short circuited means zl equals to 0 means load impedance equals to 0 and the characteristic impedance of this line is 50 ohm the given in the question itself so we know that we have to calculate the z imp impedance that is in z in equals to z naught zl plus jz naught tan beta l z naught plus jz l tan beta l we know that ZL equals to 0. Beta L is nothing but 2 pi by lambda into L is lambda by 8. That is pi by 4. So, this term goes to 0. This term goes to 0. So, this is cancelled. Z in equals to J, Z naught goes tan beta L is equals to 1. Tan 45 degrees is equals to 1. So, input impedance is inductive. So, Z 50. If we compare with the XL that is Omega L we have to calculate the inductive part that is L we have to calculate L equals to 50 by 2 pi into 10 power 9 that is 50 by 2 pi nano henrys that is 25 by pi nano henrys which is option c is correct question is in connection with the memory mapped input or output which one of the following statements is not true c if we consider the statement a the processor treats an interface resistor as a part of the memory system we know that in memory map io a part of the memory a part of the memory is allocated to IO addresses means there is no separate interfacing resistor memory itself acts as a IO addresses so statement A is correct now if we go to statement B it reduces the memory space available yes it is because we are allocating the part of the memory for the IO devices hence it is going to reduce the the memory space available hence statement b is true if we go to statement c 
that is the processor cannot manipulate input or output data residing in interface registers with the same instructions that are used to manipulate the memory location because see here this statement is false because here we are we are allocating a part of the memory space to the IO space means we can use the same instructions which are dealt with the memory space for the IO space too because IO space is a part of the memory space hence we can use the similar inst instructions to manipulate the IO space as well hence statement C is false if we go to statement D arithmetic or logical operations can be directly performed with input or output data as we can because the IO space is part of the memory space so we can perform directly with the IO data with the help of arithmetic and logical instructions of the microprocessor hence statement C is the only statement which is false hence option C is correct which of the following controller is recommended if the steady state error for step input and speed of the response is criteria for the design ok now proportional controller is for stability whereas integral controller is for steady state error and damping is used to improve speed of the response ok if you see options option A is only for stability option B is for stability and steady state error option D is for stability and speed of the response these three options are wrong if you see option C here we have PID controller that means we have stability ok this is not the criteria which has given in the question ok remaining two are to improve steady state error and damping ok so option C is correct for this question we have to find here fault current ok let us take fault current as IF IF is equal to VF by XF ok now what does it mean that fault voltage by impedance up to fault current or you can say here resistance are negligible reactance up to fault current ok now what is XF here fault is takes place at this point ok since these two are open there is no current flow to this one now how these two will be appeared here these two are in series which is parallel to this reactance J times of 0 0.15 ok so I can write this one as J 0 0.2 plus J 0 0.15 these two are in series in parallel to J times of 0 0.15 ok this is what fault reactance XF now XF is equal to you will get it is around as J times of 0 0.105 ok the total fault reactance now what is fault current IF he has given fault voltage VF as 0 0.97 by J times of 0 0.105 which is equal to minus J 9.23 per unit. Option D is correct answer. Open loop system. Open loop system let us take it as a transfer function of open loop is okay, zeros by poles. Okay, this is the transfer loop which is equal to G of S. Now G of S concerns 0, Z of S and poles P of S. Okay, now open loop is stable only when P of S is equal to 0 or you can write as pole should be equal to 0. That is option V is correct. This is the condition for Nyquist criteria in open loop system. Okay, for stability point of view. Option B is correct answer.